All right, next up, I want to look at some other uh, neat things we can do with the budget constraint. So far, we've had a budget constraint that is just linear, right? It's constant at your wage rate, no matter how many hours you work, even up to 24 hours a day. Um, that's uh, quite an abstraction from reality. And we want to be able to account for changes in the wage rate uh, based on overtime pay laws. We also want to be able to account for income that's separate from uh, wage or earned income. And so we can display all of those pretty readily uh, using the budget constraint uh, in the income leisure trade-off model uh, that we've developed so far. Let's start with overtime pay. And we said before that the slope of the budget constraint depends on the wage rate. But what if you have overtime pay laws? What if you have a law that if you work over eight hours a day, you have to get paid time and half for the rest of your time? That is, you get a 50% premium for hours you work beyond eight hours a day. Suppose that is the law. You could, all, you could imagine it's for over 10 hours a day or over 12 hours a day. Some of the laws actually are based on hours per week if you have a schedule uh, where you tend to work a cer certain number of 10 or 12 hour days and then get more days off. We'll just simplify and say, um, what if I get a 50% premium for all hours uh, worked per day over, say, eight hours? Let me grab my straight edge here. We know that one intercept here, if we do this on a daily basis, will be 24 hours of leisure and no income. And if my wage rate If I have some particular wage rate, let's just say it's $10 an hour. In our simple model where we started, this would have corresponded to 240 to some intercept here. And I would have just, as I gave up leisure and worked more, I would have earned more income. But now if I add in an overtime pay constraint, then what happens? Let me try to divide this into thirds. So I have here eight hours of leisure, 16 hours, 16 hours of leisure, and 24 hours of leisure. Eight hours of work would take me back to this point at 16 hours of leisure. And this is important. I'm going to draw a uh, just draw a dot there because this part is no longer my real budget constraint. Right? This would be my budget constraint if I didn't have an overtime pay law. But if I have an overtime pay law and I now get a premium, my wage rate changes beyond this point. In fact, beyond this point, my wage rate goes up. And if it's a 50% uh, premium, it looks something like this. And my budget constraint would develop a kink. Right? It now has a change in slope at the point where the overtime pay law kicks in. And this is consistent with our understanding that the slope of the budget constraint is based on the wage rate. Therefore, if my wage rate changes past a certain point, then the slope of my budget constraint changes. So this is my budget constraint with overtime pay. And in this particular case, the overtime pay kicked in at eight hours of work, which is the same as saying 16 hours of leisure. Once I go under 16 hours of leisure, that is over eight hours of work, my wage rate increases, the slope of my budget constraint increases. We logically can work through this at different levels of, uh, at different thresholds at which the overtime pay kicks in, and then different overtime pay premiums if it's double time time and a half or triple time, depending on the magnitude of the increase in the wage. Now let's think about um, cases where you have income that's separate from working. We'll start with a scenario where you have uh, a budget constraint based on your wage where you could earn income. So let me sketch that in, but I'm going to use a dotted line because this is just our starting point.
Now, suppose that I have another source of income and that it's separate from working. So this is where I have a rich aunt or uncle who just gives me money or I have a trust fund or I have uh, interest or dividend income, that I have money coming in from some source that I, I can depend on. I get a certain, amount, certain amount of money every month or every week or in our case, every day that's separate from, from my work and therefore my, my income from working. So that non-wage income um, that, that's coming in, suppose it's just a certain amount, I can measure it right on the vertical axis because that's where I measure income. And in fact, let me find a good measuring stick. Suppose this is the amount of my non-wage income. I'll use this piece of chalk to just represent the level of non-wage income I could get every day. Now I could get that amount of income on top of whatever I can earn from working. So if I consume no leisure and work 24 hours, I could earn this much income from uh, working, plus I have this much non-wage income. So I could actually have this much income right here. And if I worked, let's just say right about the middle here, if I worked 12 hours and consumed 12 hours of leisure, I could earn this much income from working, plus I have this trust fund or you know, generous aunt or uncle or someone who can uh, give me money, you know, interest or dividend income, I can get additional non-wage income on top of that. And if I worked, can earn this amount of uh, income, I could also get my non-wage income on top of that. You see what happens. You have another line that's parallel to this one, but it's shifted up by the amount of your non-wage income. Now the interesting part is down here. Does it shift out and come all the way down to here? Well that doesn't make sense, right? Because just because I have this rich aunt or uncle doesn't somehow magically give me more than 24 hours a day. I can't give up that income and consume more than 24 hours of leisure. So in fact, what I have is a shift up such that my actual budget constraint looks like this. I have a parallel shift up, but this end point, right, this end line stays vertical. And this distance right here, this is my non-wage income. So if I have non-wage income, it just causes my budget constraint to shift up and stay parallel. Now what if I have non-wage income and my budget constraint, um, if, and my wage rate changes? What if I have non-wage income and my wage rate changes? Well, the, wage, the change in my wage rate would change the slope of the line. Remember, because the slope of the line depends on my wage rate. The non-wage income just affects the placement of that, so it could shift up. What if I had overtime pay and I had non-wage income? Well, it could just cause it to shift up by the amount of the non-wage income and it's um, somehow the, the curvature of the lens is making this look not quite parallel but in fact this line right here is parallel to this one right all the way because the slope depends on my wage rate if I have income from some other source that doesn't depend on my wages that just causes it to shift up if I have a overtime pay and a kink in my uh, budget constraint to start with I'll still have a kink after I add on the non-wage income